What's up guys, welcome back to Redstone Engineering. This video is going to be all about hoppers. We're going to talk about how hoppers work in depth, as well as how they can be used directly in redstone circuits such as with clocks, and how they can be used on their own such as with auto sorters. With that, let's get to it. Alright, so the first property I want to go over is the fact that hoppers will take item entities in through the top of them when there's no container on top of the hopper. So right now there's no container on top of it because like a container on top of it would just be like this. And then in that case it would pull items down and it no longer checks that there's items on top. And this is actually a lag thing, which is why sometimes we'll put furnaces on top of hoppers if we want to keep it lag friendly. But we break this, it'll suck all the items in, and it doesn't matter where they come from, you can throw them in however you'd like, it's until they get onto the block above the hopper. This can be disabled by, again, putting a container on top of it, or giving it a redstone signal, which is a little bit backwards than what you would think, but it is what it is. So if you get a redstone signal, it no longer grabs the items like that, until you, again, get rid of the redstone signal, and it'll grab all the items and put them into the hopper. Alright, so next, hoppers can also push items into other containers when the hopper has, first of all, items in its own container, and it faces into another container. So we have this hopper that faces into the ground, but is still next to the chest, and then we have this hopper that actually faces into the chest. This hopper won't do anything because it's not facing into a container, so all the items in its container won't do anything. Whereas this hopper will push the items from its own container into the container it's facing into, which in this case is a chest. So like hoppers can push items in to other containers, they can also pull items from other containers. So if another container is right above the hopper, it will pull the items from that container into the hopper's own container, right? And if we combine this with the previous property, like this, then the hopper will pull the items from this chest and then they will push it into this chest, which allows you to chain hoppers together or just chain containers like this together so you can move items around efficiently. One of the more annoying things is that you can't do it upwards though, but this can be mitigated by using a dropper and like a water stream or something like that, or other creative ideas such as a dropper chain or something like that. So things get a little bit more complicated when we have hoppers stacked vertically like this. So in this situation, we have a hopper facing into another hopper, and then this hopper has a hopper above it, right? So what will happen is actually this hopper gets two items per push slash pull into it. And then there's a buildup of items in here because it can only push one item at a time into the chest. But this hopper pushes the items and then this hopper pulls the items. So two items at a time go. Whereas this one has this hopper facing the other way and not down. So we only have one item at a time and there's no buildup. It does go to the same speed into the chest, but if you have a long vertical pipe, doing it like this is more efficient than this because then what you could do is you could have say an item down like another hopper down here with a chest and then you can have it get rid of this build up just as quickly and you can have the items overall go faster. So now let's talk about the details of how all of this will work. So if we have this situation right here, first of all, hoppers will push and pull items at a rate of four redstone ticks, which comes out to be about 2.5 items per second or five items every two seconds barring lag because if you're lagging it'll take a little bit longer of course and if we have this situation right here this hopper has this chest on top of it and it faces into this chest but then we have a hopper down here facing into this chest right the way the ordering will work is that this hopper will pull the item from this chest and then the item goes into here and then the game will check whether or not this hopper will pull the item before this item, this hopper pushes, right? So the hopper under it will pull the item from this hopper first before this hopper pushes it into the chest. So if I put a bunch of items in here, then this chest won't have anything in it because this hopper will pull them all down into this chest right here and we won't get anything into this chest at all until this gets either full or something happens where this can't pull any of the items and then this will fill up and then this would then get pushed into this chest. This is how auto sorters work because in order to make auto sorters work, you need to have this hopper pull certain items and you usually do that by filling up this whole thing. But you, then you have a hopper chain on top of it that just pushes a huge random amount of items. And what will happen is that when the item that this thing is sorting will get to this hopper, it'll immediately pull it down before the item gets pushed over to the other side, right? And that is how those work, and let's get into those right now. 
So just an example of an application you can use hoppers for and something that they're extremely useful for is auto sorting where you have a hopper chain across the top like this. And of course, there's many different ways you can build this. This is just my favorite way to build this. But generally, you have a hopper chain that goes across the top and then you have multiple of these right next to each other. And each one of these sorts out a specific item. So right now, this one's sorting out gold blocks. And what will happen is you can put gold blocks up here and then you can put other blocks up here right after. And the gold blocks will go down to the chest and they won't go over here. But then the blocks that aren't gold blocks will go to the end. And when you have multiple next to each other, they'll go to wherever they get sorted out. And the cycle just continues until it gets to the very, very end. Uh, and then they just go usually to like an overflow chest or something. And through this series, we've actually covered everything we need to know to understand exactly how this works. But basically, you set it up like this where you have this hopper right here face specifically not down into this hopper because if you do that then it can cause issues because this hopper you fill up completely with whatever you're trying to sort and you have to make sure all the slots are filled up completely so that they this hopper can only pull down the item that you're trying to sort which in this case is gold blocks and then you have this hopper that just faces into the chest and it usually it'll just have one item in here just with how the disabling works and then you put a comparator behind this hopper here and i like putting an opaque block here but it's not necessary uh but i like doing it just so that this is shorter and so that uh aesthetically like you can't see the redstone but you put a comparator here and then you put redstone here redstone here and then a repeater here that phases then into a torch that powers this block and will disable this hopper so basically right now this is on because this is not full enough to get this redstone dust to power but the second a uh, gold block goes in here, that turns off temporarily. And then this will get enabled and it'll push one more item in here. And it'll do that over and over again. Something else I like to use hoppers for all the time is long-term clocks. Long-term clocks are sometimes extremely useful or extremely necessary in larger circuits. And hoppers provide a good way to make them in a compact way like this. Because it takes four redstone ticks for an item to get pushed or pulled by a hopper. But you have five entire slots, so you can fill up one of these in all the way. And have that amount of time pass before the clock will even flip once. This is my favorite design, and we also went over this in the clock video, so I'm not going to go too far in depth. But this is a good example when hoppers can be used directly in redstone circuits. Alright guys, that'll be it for this episode. As always, I hope you found something of value in this video. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comments because I'll be happy to answer them. I hope you have a great rest of your day or night, and I will see you next time.